Hi everybody! Welcome back to the House of Floss and Fluff. My name is Carrie, and I know that it has been a really, really long time since I have uploaded a new video. So this is a channel that is primarily dedicated to cross stitch. Um, every now and then I might throw in some hand embroidery or some punch needle, possibly even some knitting, but for the most part, it's all about the cross stitch. So I was looking back at my channel and I believe my last video was uploaded, I think it said like 10 months ago. So I want to say that was May of last year. So yeah, it's been a really long time. I know. I'm sorry, you guys. 2020, it kicked my butt. I'm not going to lie. It was quite a year. And I know everybody has had their own experiences with last year. It was just in insane. And it still is kind of creepy. So I really hope everyone is doing well. I hope you guys had a good ending to 2020 and I hope that your 2021 has started out really well and I hope you've gotten to do lots of stitching. So I'm looking at my table and I have so much stuff to show you guys. Um, so just real quick, I thought I'd do a little bit of a life update. I mean, it's been 10 months. I'm not going to go through everything because we'd be here for, you know, four hours. Uh, so basically what happened with 2020 and why I kind of took a break last year is I was having some health issues that cropped up, um, ended up being diagnosed with fibromyalgia and osteoarthritis and I'm doing, I'm doing good. Um, so nothing life threatening, <laughs> just kind of had to readjust, uh, my life a little bit, um, but nothing too bad. Um, along with those diagnosis, we found out that I had some kidney stones. So I did have to have a outpatient procedure to get rid of those. Everything went really good. I'm doing really well. So that was a huge success. Um, the other thing they found is that I have, basically I have some pulmonary issues and what it kind of amounts to is I have some scarring in my lungs. We have no idea where that came from, how it developed. It's just kind of there. And so it doesn't really affect me that much. Every now and then I get, you know, a little bit of pain in my chest if I kind of overdo it, but nothing too bad. And they're keeping an eye on it. So really nothing there to report. Um, the biggest change, and if you follow me on Instagram, which I always put a link to my Instagram, my Etsy shop, any of that kind of stuff in the description box below, which is a little triangle underneath the video. So like I said, if you follow me on Instagram, I did post a picture where I talked about the fact that I have lost a fair amount of weight. Uh, basically, I did finally hit my weight goal, and so I have lost right around 77 pounds since July of 2020. So I did that because, mainly because of the fibromyalgia and the osteoarthritis. Uh, working out more and watching my eating has definitely helped with those symptoms, um, and I've been able to feel a lot better. So that's really where I've been. Um, so it's, when I say it out loud, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but then it's kind of like, I think about it and it's like, yeah, it actually really has been a lot. So I, I have missed floss tube. Um, I kind of took a break in general from social media. So I have a lot of floss tube to catch up on. So I'm sorry if I haven't been commenting, I promise I'm getting back to videos. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how far back I'm going to go. I'm going to do my best to catch up as much as I can with everyone. Um, like I said, so I missed everyone and I missed getting to share what I've been working on. So yeah, so I hope you guys are excited to see me back and excited to see what I've been working on because I'm really, really looking forward to showing you guys everything. So, okay, where to start? So I think we're going to start with my finishes. Um, so these are all things that have been completely finished. So they're FFO'd, which is a fully finished object. And I am, well, most of them, I am 100% sure I have, you've never seen them. Um, not on Floss Tube, possibly on Instagram, but definitely not on Floss Tube. There are a couple that I'm like 99% sure I have not showed them in a video. I may not even show them on Instagram. I don't know. But anyway. So we're going to just start. Um, there's really no order to anything, I'll be honest. And I apologize if it's kind of all over the place. I feel like I'm really out of practice doing this. And of course, I feel like I'm really out of practice and I, I don't have a single note. Yeah, that could be, that could, e this is either going to go really brilliantly with no notes and just off the cuff, or this is going to be like horrible failure. But we're going to cross our fingers and we're going to go, it's going to go brilliantly. Uh, so 
if I'm going along and I don't know information, like I'm not 100% sure where a pattern came from, I always go back and I edit that in um, on the bottom of the screen so you guys can see where stuff comes from. Plus, I do try to put everything in the description box with um, underneath the video with links. If there's something that I missed, please go ahead and shoot me a comment. Let me know and I will go ahead and go back and edit the description box to include that or I'll make sure I include it in the next video, which yes, I'm really hoping to continue doing videos, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna start, like I said, with the things that are completely finished and I'm gonna start with this really cute one. So this is Bushel and a Peck. This is from Pineberry Lane. Now I got this in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I believe it is the spring of 2016 issue but this is available on Pineberry Lane's website and I'm sure if it's on their website, I'm sure it's available in many needle workshops. But I love this, isn't it cute? So I stitched it on a 40 count. This is a 40 count from Hand Eyed by Rolanda. Oh, and I apologize for the noise. My heater just kicked on. Uh, we have an extra heater in our living room because it is cold. Yeah. It turned really cold. It was beautiful. We had a day where it was like almost 60 degrees. It was gorgeous. And now it's like 20 degrees and a north wind. Yeah, it's okay. Spring is coming. Anyway, back to the really cute pillow. <laughs> um, so like I said, it's a Pineberry Lane stitched on a 40 count from Hand Eye by Rolanda. I changed all of the colors. I have no idea what I used. I just grabbed stuff that pretty much matched the called for colors. Um, it's just fancy floss from my stash which Fancy Floss is just a hand-eyed floss. And I finished it into this really super cute pillow. So this is like my proudest finish because this is the culmination of working on making pillows for like the last two or three years. So if you go back and you watch, I think it was like video number two, which I will make sure that all of my past videos are, are back up on my channel. Anyway, so if you go back and you watch like video number two, I was trying to learn how to make pillows and I had no idea what I was doing. And I don't know how to, work my sewing machine. That hasn't changed, but we're not going to go there. Um, so I started, I hand sew everything. And this from the first pillow that I made to this is incredible. So I was so proud of myself for actually being able to put this together, but I love it. It's so cute. And I keep this out pretty much year round because it's just adorable. Okay. So then I'm going to get into, this is the other one that I'm pretty sure I haven't showed. I'm not hundred percent sure though, but I'm pretty sure. So this is the bird sampler. This is the chickadee sampler, and this is an entire series. Um, these are from From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy, and I will post a link to her Etsy shop. She also has a floss tube, which I will post a link to that too. And I love this. I love this. I have the whole series. It, they're just so cute. So this is, is this the same fabric? Oh, I think it is. I think it's, well, maybe not the same, but they're pretty close. So my guess is this is either another hand dyed by Rolanda or it might be a Seraphim. It's a 40 count. Again, I changed all of the colors to just whatever matched the called fours. And I just used the hand dyed floss that I have collected. And then of course I did go ahead and I put in a little button. So I like to do that. So if you're, if you're new, if you're new, welcome. I didn't do a welcome, did I? See, I'm scattered. So welcome if you're new. And of course, if you're returning, thank you so much. Um, but I do like to put in buttons into pieces. Sometimes it's simply because I'm just too lazy and I'm like at the end of a project and it's like, I can just put on a button. I don't have to stitch anymore. Yes, let's do that. Uh, but mainly it's because I kind of like the little quirkiness of adding the little button to it and giving it a little different look, but I love that. So, and I love chickadees. Um, chickadees are, there's kind of a history with chickadees. Um, that was like the first bird. My husband likes to watch the birds. And so that was kind of like the first bird that my son, when he was like five, that he could recognize. And so every time he'd see a chickadee, he would run around the house saying chickadee dee dee. So every time I see a chickadee, that's what pops into my head. So I love chickadees because it reminds me of when my son was five because my son is now going to be turning 17 at the end of the month. That's scary. But anyway, okay, so this is the uh, another one of the bird sampler series. This is the Cardinal, which how gorgeous is he? So this red, this is a Veldani red. 
I don't know the exact color, but it is absolutely stunning. And this, it's another 40 count. This, I believe, is a hand-dyed um, fabric from uh, Dying for Cross Stitch by Kathy. And she does have a website now, so I will put a link to that. Um, I think this is a, a Lugana, or not a Lugana, I'm sorry, not a Lugana. Whatever the 40 count even weave is, I cannot remember exactly what the name of it is now, but isn't it gorgeous? I love it. And I am planning to turn all of the series into pillows looking like this. They're all going to look relatively the same. So, but, oh, this is, again, I love cardinals too. So I just like birds, I guess. Well, apparently I do because I'm stitching a lot of birds, but that's okay. So I love that. And then I did take this one. So this was a little wooden blank that I got. I think it was from a shop on Etsy. I'll have to look and I will link to it if I can find it. Um, and then this was just a little bird, a little cardinal button. And I just uh, put that on top. So I did paint the little wooden blank. They come just a natural wood color. And so I painted it with like a little bit of bronze paint. Isn't that cute? So I love that. Okay. So getting away from birds. Um, so this is Mr. and Mrs. Snow from Tralala. And of course I did not grab the actual pattern, but you know, I, I stayed fairly close to the called fours. I changed things up a little bit. The biggest change I did was on the bottom. So the bottom is just kind of, I think it's just all white kind of, I think I want to say it was probably three or four rows of just white. And so I went ahead and I changed it to this kind of variegated pink color and I just did, I just did a little border on the bottom. And then because I used that variegated pink down here, I went ahead and I used it in the star up here. So it kind of looked, it looked like it belonged. Um, but oh, I love, I mean, you guys know, well, again, if you're new, <laughs> you may not know, or you may not remember, but I love snowmen. Oops. I'm so sorry. So sorry. I bumped the table. I love snowmen. I love stitching snowmen. Um, even though I hate stitching in white, you guys, I do. except when it's on 40 count. So this is again, a 40 count linen. I'm, this is the same. This might be the same as the one I stitched the Cardinal on. So I'm pretty sure this is from dying for cross stitch by Kathy. Um, which would be a 40 count even weave, but it's gorgeous. And then the chenille trim, I believe this is a lady dot creates trim. If not, it's another, um, it's a trim from Kathy as well, but I love it. And I just did simple little finish on it. So super cute can be out for winter and I'm running out of room already for where to put things. Okay. So, oh boy, this one for the life of me now, I'm looking at it and I can't remember who the designer is. Isn't that bad? So I will put who the designer is on the bottom. I know I bought it from a shop on Etsy and I know that they also have, this was a series that they did and they did a snowman one who's drinking hot chocolate. I've seen him stitched a lot and he was in, that was in the November and December, 2020 issue of just cross stitch magazine. It's that same designer. I just, Madam ice maybe is the name on Etsy. Don't quote me on that. I'll fix it. I think it was Madam Ice. I might be wrong. But isn't he cute? A little reindeer with his little cardinal friend. Horrible. So cute. So I ended up adding a whole bunch of buttons on here <laughs> because I fit him in a, this was I think a five inch hoop. I probably could have gone down a little bit, but I want to say the four inch might have kind of cut off his antler a little. Uh, so I went with the five inch. So I needed to cover in some space there. So I just stuck on a whole bunch of buttons. Again, I used the same star blank that I had that I used on the cardinal finish, but I painted this one red and then I put the heart button in the middle, but super cute. Great little one for Christmas. And yes, my house is still decorated for Christmas. Yeah. So I kind of did that because I wanted to film in front of my nice, my shelves for Christmas because they're all full and really, really pretty. And because, okay, this is probably going to sound crazy and that's okay, but I swear you guys, last year we took down our Christmas stuff and like the world went crazy. So I'm a little reluctant to take down the Christmas stuff this year. Not going to lie. It may be up until next Christmas. Who knows? It's okay. It's all good. 
it can be Christmas all year round, right? Yeah, just as long as we don't have snow all year round. Okay, <laughs> so this is from the winter issue of Punch and Gnome Primitive Stitcher Magazine. It's from the 2020 issue. This is from Twin Peaks. And it's chillin', isn't he? Oh my god, he's so cute. This again, this is another 40 count. Uh, this was just a... I want to say it was just like a natural linen from 123 Stitch. And I did, I used all of the called for colors, you guys. Yes, all of the called for DMCs. I like never did that. But I did this time because I loved him. And he's just so cute. And that's really, this is how I kind of felt a lot this winter. Was I just want to chill out and just lay there and not have to really do anything. <laughs> so he was perfect. I love him. And then, so I did do, with this one, I painted the hoop green and then I went ahead and I just put some white polka dots on with paint as well and I really like how it turned out so just a little different with my hoop but nothing extreme okay so now we get into some fun you guys so I have always kind of wanted to do some model stitching um, and I've stitched my own models so I do have a few cross stitch designs in my Etsy shop nothing major, but a few. Um, so I've, like I said, I've done my own models because I would never ever give my patterns to anybody else to stitch because I like hand draw my patterns or I, you know, do them by hand. No one is going to be able to understand what I'm scribbling down except for me. Cause half the time I don't even understand what the heck I did, but you know, I can figure it out anyway. So I would never, I would never put that onto anybody else, <laughs> just me. Um, but it, like I said, I've always wanted to kind of model stitch, but I've always been nervous because I am a slow stitcher, so I'm not great with deadlines, but I was approached by Teresa from Primitive Acorns. I will put a link to her Etsy shop, and I love her, okay? I have stitched a lot of her patterns. I own a lot of her patterns already. She's awesome. And so when she was like, would you mind doing some model stitching for me? I was like, yes, like just where do I sign up? Let's go. Um, and her stuff is small, you know, it's fairly small and so I can stitch it fairly quickly. So the first one she gave me was actually a set of three. Um, they are called Autumn Cakes. They're so cute, you guys. So look at these. How cute is that? So these are stitched on 32 count dark cobblestone from 123 Stitch and I used all of the called for DMCs that she, that she, um, put into the pattern. So cute. And then she wanted this set finished into pillows. And so that's what I did. And I just used, this was just fabric that I had from Walmart. Uh, the trim, the trim might be the only part that would be hard to replicate because I don't know if they have green trim anymore. They used to. Our hardwood store used to actually have this green kind of trim. But all this is, is twine. So just your typical um, hemp twine. And all I did was dye it in some dark green writ because it's a natural, you know, it's a natural material. So it dyed really well. This was actually my husband's idea was to use the green trim on here. And so I went ahead and dyed it. And then these little buttons are from Joann's. So very easy to replicate if you really like how I finished it. So that was the first one. And then, oh, look at that one. But look at all that white. And I had to stitch it, I stitched it on 32 counts, so I railroaded it. But it turned out so pretty. Oh, I love it. So pretty. And then this one. Oh, this is my favorite. I love them all, but this is my favorite. Because we got a sunflower and we got the pumpkin. Oh, so cute. Absolutely adorable. I love them. And so these are available in her shop. Oh, and the backing fabric. So this one was just kind of a pumpkin. And then this one I did, a green with some flowers. But oh, I love those. Those came out so nice. Okay, so then she asked me, she sent me a Halloween to stitch for her. And this is, um, I believe this is called Witch and Her Crow. I might have that wrong. I will fix it if I have it wrong. I'm sorry, you guys. Like I said, my poor, I should have taken notes and I didn't. So she left it up to me how I wanted to fully finish this one. The minute I saw it, I was like, that needs to go in a stick frame. But it's been a little while since I made a stick frame. So this one was not my best stick frame, but I think it turned out still really, really cute. And this was stitched on a 28 count um, 
color in cotton fabric. I, it's called patina. That was the color. And again, I used all of the called for colors. But I love it. Oh, look at that crow. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Like I said, I will put the name if I butchered the name of the pattern. I apologize. Like I said, I should have done that with something I didn't. So that was the Halloween. Okay. And then she asked me to do a Christmas one. And how cute is that? Now, this was another one that she sent me how she wanted it finished. And basically, I handed the picture and went to my husband. And I was like, can you do that? Because I don't know how to do that. So he did. He cut out the foam for me to make it into the house. And I, okay, I love it. But I will say, trying to do this part and trying to get the fabric to lay down right. Yeah. We're lucky that it's standing because I seriously was ready to throw it out the window. But it turned out super adorable in the end. And yeah. And of course, I am completely blanking on what the name of this pattern was. I stitched them. I don't name them. I'm sorry, you guys. I will put the name of the pattern down here. Again, you can find it in Teresa um, Primitive Acorns. You can find it in her Etsy shop, which I will, of course, link. But isn't it? Oh, it's so cute. And this was, this was just a... Uh, natural raw kind of uh, 32 count linen that I got on one two three stitch and it's stitched with all of the called for DMC's but super super cute okay and then not done yet she asked me to do one more so this is the most recent one this was a St. Patrick's Day one and so this is luck how cute is that Again, she gave me, she, I think she sent me a picture of a pillow and this was kind of my interpretation of the pillow that she had sent me. This is a 32 count. This is just a cream. I think it's a Zweigart. I can't remember which lip, but I think it's a Zweigart. It's just a 32 count regular cream color. And these are the called for colors, which is just two colors. Super fast to stitch. Totally adorable. It looks awesome. I did go ahead and add the little buttons in because, you know, me, buttons. Love buttons. Had to put them in put the little rusty clothespin and then I used the same fabric all the way around but so cute and then this one was kind of fun because I stuffed this one because I wanted it really squishy so I actually stuffed this with hold on you guys ready shredded paper yes you know like you have your shredder and you have to shred your bills and your credit card offers and all that kind of stuff that you don't want people to get a hold of I use that to stuff the pillow. It turned out awesome. I love that. I love being able to recycle stuff. Okay, so that was all the stuff that model stitching that I did. I did stitch another primitive acorn pattern. This is from, I believe, the 2016 Just Cross Stitch Halloween ornament issue. If I'm wrong, I will put the correction down here. This turned out really, really cute. I stitched this on Osenberg linen, which is an uneven linen, so I definitely gives a very primitive look to things. And I I did not stitch this with the colorful colors. I just grabbed whatever I had that looked similar. And then this is a, kind of has, looks like a wood grain. It's a plastic hoop. I got this one at Walmart. Um, you can get them at Walmart. You, I know you can also find them at Michaels. I found some different shapes at Michaels, but I like them. It's a very quick, easy way to do a finish. And I don't have to paint them, which is awesome. Okay, last fully finished thing, you guys. And that's just because I love this one so much. This is like my favorite finish of last year. <gasps> Isn't it awesome? Oh, I love it. So this is Three Witches from Barbara Anna. And what I will do is I'll insert a picture somewhere around here of what the model of this pattern looked like because mine is totally different. So you guys can see. Now, what I did is I separated the three witches because instead of making them sisters, I wanted to make them like best friends or kind of like in the same coven. And so I wanted them all to look different. So they all have different skin tones. They all have different hair colors. I changed up the dress colors. Nothing in here is the called for. And I stitched, so the two on the end here, these two are stitched on 40 count linens. And the one in the center is stitched on a 36 count linen. It was a 40 when I grabbed it. It is not. It's a 36, but it's okay. It turned out really cute. And I went ahead. Now I stitched them all and then I'm looking at them thinking, how am I going to fully finish these? Because I originally thought I was going to finish them into pillows, but I was like, you know, I make a lot of pillows. 
I have a lot of pillows. Let's try something different. And I had this board that I had gotten from Walmart. And I was like, huh, I wonder if I cut them down if they'll fit on there. They sort of did. So then I was like, let's burn them. Let's just burn them because burning stuff is fun. And I haven't done it in a while on a finish. So I did. The only problem, I usually use like one of the candle lighters, the lighter that's got the long hand, you know, the long piece on it. I didn't have one that had any fluid in it. So my husband, my wonderful husband, pulled out his propane torch for me and I used that. Yeah, I almost got a little too close here, but he fixed it for me and everything was fine. The rest of them went very smoothly. My awesome hubby also made me this totally cute broom. I was like, I really want to put a broom on here. He's like, okay, I'll make you one. And he did. And it's amazing. And I love it. So yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait for Halloween. Like, so I may have to take the Christmas stuff down for September and October because I have to put the Halloween stuff out. Like that just has to go. <laughs> so I'm teasing. I promise the Christmas stuff is going to come down. My spring stuff is going to go up just a little bit behind. Okay. So that's all the fully finished stuff. <sighs> all right. So now, are you guys ready? Maybe go take a little break, pause, go get a glass of water. Come on back. We're gonna get back, okay? Now, I've got a few finished things. So I finished all the stitching, I just haven't turned it into anything yet. And then I've got my whips, which are of course my works in progress. No particular order. I'm gonna start with the stuff that I have finished. So this is another one in the bird series, in that bird sampler series. Um, by Wendy, which is from the Heart Needle Art. This is the Bluebird. Oh, isn't he cute? This is a 40 count. This is a hand dyed by Rolanda. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I lied. It is a seraphim. I have no idea what the color is, but it's a seraphim. And again, I changed all of the called for colors to just whatever, whatever gloss I had that matched. So there is that one. Okay, and you guys, just bear with me. I'm just going to kind of set stuff back in the bags. Because I think this one actually might have another start on it. But I just don't have very much done, so it's really not worth showing. But I'm just going to set stuff back in the bag so I don't lose stuff. Okay, so this finish is by Hands on Design. And this is the Where, Where Liberty Dwells. And I went ahead and I did the pillow for this. I will probably go back and do the drum because I'm not going to use the velveteen to finish my pillow. So I might go, I will probably go back and stitch the drum part and then use the velveteen to finish that. Because I went ahead and I stitched this on a 40 count. Pretty sure this is seraphim. This might be prairie grass. I might be wrong. But look how adorable that turned out. Oh my god, it's so pretty. And I changed all the colors, I think. I think. If there was DMC, there were, I think there were a couple DMCs in here. Those I kept. I just changed all the fancy floss to what I had. And if I had a fancy floss, I used it. If I had a called for fancy floss, I used it. Um, I don't think I did. And so if I don't have the called for, I just use whatever. It looks good. So cute though. I love it. And like, that'll get turned into a pillow eventually. Hopefully in time to be displayed for summer this year. We'll see. I'm sorry, please just ignore the crinkling. Like I said, if I don't get this stuff kind of back where it belongs, maybe this one was like, no, I don't want to go back in the bag. Apparently it wants to be finished right now. But no, if I don't get stuff kind of back where it belongs, I'm going to be here all day. Okay, now we're in to whips. So whips are um, works in progress. And... There may be a couple finishes thrown in there just because they're in the same package or they're in the same container as other um, other projects that I'm working on. So I think I'm, and this is no particular order. I've just kind of worked on this over the last probably couple months. I did not go all the way back to May, you guys, and find out what I was working on because yeah, we'd be here for hours. So this is from Silver Creek Samplers. This is Winterful Friends. And this was a wonderful little gift that my stitchy wife, Jen, Jen Upton, if you're not watching her floss tube channel, I will put a link to that below because her floss tube channel is awesome. And she sent me this for, I believe, Christmas. It might have been my birthday, but it's awesome. I love it. And 
this is where I am on that. So I am close to a finish. Close. But it's so cute. And this is, I am using, again, this is that same 40 count that I think I have stitched three or four other projects on. So I got a lot of use out of this one. This was a um, hand, this was a uh, dying for cross stitch uh, by Kathy. This was a 40 count uh, even weave. I can't remember what the name of the 40 count even weave is. And none of the called fours, just whatever I have on hand. So, but yeah, love that one. It's a snowman, you know, of course I love that. Okay, well this one is like falling down, so I guess we're gonna go this way. Okay, so this is from Lizzie Kate, sorry. These are the Autumn Smalls, and I went ahead and I finished this one. So the Autumn Banner. So that is all finished. Turned out super cute. I stitched this on 28 count Monaco that I dyed with coffee. It is stitched in none of the called works because, you know, surprise, surprise. It's just a whole bunch of hand dyed flosses that I just grabbed that sort of match. And I did go ahead and I did put on the little button eyes that came with the pattern. Super cute. Glad to have that one finished. And then I did go ahead and I started this one here. So the pumpkins, this is called Halloween. And again, I'm stitching it on the same. This is a pretty big piece of Monaco that was coffee dyed. So I'm stitching them all on this. And how cute is that? So I don't know if you can tell the difference. I don't know if this, if the camera will pick it up. So this one I stitched normal 28 count two over two. Okay. This one. I went ahead and I'm stitching it one over two because I like things that kind of look primitive. So it's kind of a primitive look and 28 count Monaco really shrinks a fair amount when you dye it. And so I think the one over one, or I'm sorry, one over two doesn't look too bad. I like it. Like I said, I like the primitive look. So for me, it works and it's a little bit quicker that way. <laughs> stitching one over one over two, that's a lot faster. Okay, so now we get into a Barbara Anna. This one is The Fruit Thief. I love Barbara Anna. Barbara is one of my favorite designers. I have a lot of favorite designers. Barbara Anna is definitely, definitely in the top 10. She would probably be in the top five. I own a lot of her patterns and I love them. And I love this one being, it's kind of different to me and I just really like it. So... Here is where I am. Hold on. Can I fold that? Yeah, I can fold that. Okay. So this is being stitched on a 40 count. I don't think it's dark cobble, so I want to say it's like just a natural linen. And this is from one, two, three stitch. Mind blank. Sorry. So my video probably cut out, so I'll have to edit them together. Um, that just happens. It kind of just shuts off. <laughs> so I apologize for that. And I went ahead and I did change all the call fours. Um, I believe the call fours are just DMC in this. I can check that because I actually have the entire pattern right here. Yes, call fours DMC. I went ahead and just changed to whatever fancy floss I had because I really wanted those blues to pop because blue is my absolute favorite color. But oh, how I just love it. Oh, I cannot wait to have this done. It's gonna look so good. It's gonna look so good. I cannot wait to have that done. And I love, like I said, I love Barbara I got this off of Creative Poppy, which I will, of course, put a link to um, because I do enjoy PDFs. I'm one of those that I definitely like the instant part <laughs> where I see a pattern, I buy a pattern, I can kit it up and start it all within like 10 minutes. So I'm definitely a PDF person. And that fabric does not want to go down inside. Okay. So this is one of those where I have a finish, another like the Lizzie Kate one where I have a finish and I started another one. So this is Sheepish. These are from Nikki, Nikki's Creations Primitives. There is another, um, another booklet like this. I have that one as well and I cannot find it right now and it's driving me crazy, but these are so cute. So the first one I'm going to show you guys that I finished is this one right here with the B. And 
There he is. How adorable. So this is a 28 count mystery linen. I have no idea, no clue what it is. But I did use all of the called fours. I grabbed all of the called for DMCs and stitched it. So cute. So it'll get turned into a little pillow. So then I went ahead and I started this one. And all I have is the tree. I just kind of, I'm not even done with the tree. I just have the tree started. But very cute. I'm excited to have that one done too. So I have some little spring sheep to display. I love those. I have, I did stitch one and I don't think I showed you guys that one. Um, I stitched a sheep. It was a patriotic one. So it was by a flag. I'll have to make sure when I pull out my summer or my spring and summer stuff that I show that in, the, in an upcoming video, hopefully. Okay, so this one, I started this sometime last year. And this is a free pattern, so I'm just gonna, real quick. Okay, this is a free pattern by, oh, the little stitcher. Wow, her name's on there, but her shop name, it was not her shop name. So, that is where I am now. So I did not have a ton done on this. Uh, so I've made a fair amount of progress. This is a 28 count. I have no idea what the name is. It is from 123 Stitch. So it's just one of, I think, a Zweigart or a Witchlet Linen. And I think I changed. Oh, I'm sorry. I do know the name because I actually put the sticker on the bottom here. It is a 28 count Wheat, wheat Lugana from 123 Stitch. I did change all the colors, except for black. <laughs> but I did change all the other ones to different fancy floss. I think I left the black and the white because they're black and white. So I just left those. But that's really cute. So I'm looking forward to having that one done. Because I don't have I don't have a ton of stuff stitched for spring or summer. I love stitching for winter and fall. Those are those are my things that I just really like. The color palette, I think. Sorry. You know what? We're just gonna toss this one down because that one's just being a pain. Okay, <laughs> so this is one I had started sometime last year too. I've been working on it slowly. This is Silver Creek Samplers. This is Michael's Prayer. Sorry for the glare. Super cute. This is a, I'm stitching this on a 35 count linen from R&R, &R, and I don't know what the name is, I'm sorry, but it is an R&R &R linen, and I love, I do love the fabric, and I did change all of the called fours, I just grabbed whatever was close, I mean it's fairly similar, so I grabbed what was close, um, but I think since the last time I showed this, I mean I think I've done pretty much everything from under the Lord down there, I've stitched. So I've stitched a fair amount on this one. But that's one of my husband's favorites, so I need to get that done so we can display it hopefully this year for a little while. Okay, so this was a wonderful surprise gift, again, from my stitchy wife, Jen. This is Barbara Anna, the tree of, is it the, the tree of magic? And I started this because, okay, I forgot to tell you guys this. Um, I started this because my husband ended up having a positive COVID test, which meant I ended up with COVID. So we were kind of out of it for about two weeks. We did okay. Um, both of us survived very well. Uh, it was pretty much for him, it was a really bad head cold and it did get into his chest a little bit. He still has a cough, but he's doing a lot better. Um, for me, it stayed as a sinus. It felt like a sinus head cold. And so I ended up with a little bit of, oops, sorry. And I'm moving, I'm so sorry I bumped the tail. Um, so like I said, sinus head cold. So I ended up with a lot of dizziness. But other than that, we made it through pretty good. Just tired, you know, but we're, we're doing good. Getting back to normal. So that was end of February. Yeah, and I don't know what happened to my voice right there. Um, yeah like mid-February to the end of February, we were quarantined. Um, our son, because he's 16 and lives in his bedroom, he never got sick. Still had to quarantine, but never got sick. 
which is good. I'm glad he didn't get sick. Anyway, so Tree of Magic. So I went ahead and started. This was my COVID start. And this is not the fabric that came with the kit because I kind of screwed up. I oriented my fabric wrong and I started stitching and it was in the wrong place and I got really frustrated. My husband was like, just put it away. Don't worry about it. Grab a different fabric. And I'm like, oh, I can work on 40 count because I like working on 40 count. So I have a very minor start. I mean, it's not a ton, but this is going to be so much fun to work on. So this is a 40 count. This is a seraphim. This is, I think, prairie grass or parchment. It's a seraphim, I'm sorry. Uh, and of course I'm using all the called four colors because it came with all the fluffs. So thank you, Jen, because I love that. That was, that was an awesome gift and it came at a really good time because COVID, you know. Okay, Sheepy Start. So this was, I think, a market release last year or maybe the year before, doesn't matter. I love it. This is Thistles and it is Will You Be My Valentine? Oh, and this is where I am. So I have the whole cart and all the flowers done. I'm just working on the sheep. And I will be honest, I got a little bored working on the sheep. That's why I haven't gotten more done. He should honestly be finished at this point, but he's so cool. So I'm very excited to have it all done. I just got a little bored stitching the sheep. But I love it. This is a, hold on. I'm gonna see if I actually have the tag in here so I can tell you guys for sure what a fabric is for once, maybe. I say that and I probably don't have the tag and I don't that's weird usually I throw the fabric tag in my bag I didn't okay I think it's a seraphim because I buy a lot of seraphim so we're just gonna go with it's a seraphim I don't know what color um oh and I did not I'm not using the call for us I changed to I think whatever I had on hand except for the sheep the called for was grits I believe was it oatmeal I'm sorry Gentle Arts Oatmeal is the sheep, and I did actually have that one, so I am using that. Okay, and I'm sorry, I keep... This table is a little wobbly. Sorry, I may have to get my other table if I do more videos. Okay, so okay, this is... How cute. This is Amy Brucken, and these are besties. So what I did is I actually stitched the besties one, and I turned it into a Biscornu because it didn't want to get turned into anything else. It was supposed to be a pillow. It decided it wanted to be a Biscornu. And I sent that to my bestie, Jen, for her birthday. And of course, I didn't take a picture, you know, because why would I do that? Anyway, so now I'm going back and I'm stitching all three of them for myself. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch them all in a row. And so this is this one right here with all the cardinals around him. How cute is he? Isn't he adorable? Oh my God, I love him so much. This one, I actually know the fabric. <laughs> this is a 36 count under the sea fabrics called Winter Wishes. And it is an opalescent. I believe this is the only opalescent I own. Uh, Jen and Candy, just they made me buy it. They made me buy it at StitchCon. So, I'm going with that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it but it's adorable and I'm glad they made me buy it because it's perfect for this. And I'm stitching this with, I don't think any of the call for colors, whatever I had on hand, that's what got thrown in there. Okay, and I also learned, okay, just, just a little note. When you're putting together a Biscornu, okay, see how this is actually fairly light. Yeah, do not use white on a fairly light blue color and then try to put the Biscornu together. Cause you have to, when you make a Biscornu, you outline it in a uh, backstitch and then you use the backstitch to put the two pieces together to, and to form the Biscornu. I outlined her Biscornu in white with this very, very light blue. Yeah, I couldn't see my backstitching line. It turned out, but and usually the these aren't too much of a struggle anymore. They're actually, once you do one, they're, they're fairly easy to put together. But definitely use a nice bright color. And it's the last whip, you guys. The last one. Yay. This is another Barbara Anna. I will go ahead and I'll insert a model picture because I don't have the model. I just have the pattern printed. 
This is called Autumn Autumn Bounty, and it is from the 2019 fall issue of Punch and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. And I got the bird, so I got most of the bird part here. You know, his head is fairly done, and I started on the little rider. This is this is a raw, natural raw 40 count linen that I got from One Two Three Stitch, and. Of course, I'm using none of the call force. I'm just using whatever I have on hand. And I love it. I love Barbara Anna. I really do. She can just, whatever she designs, I fall in love with. Okay. That is everything for the most part that I worked on. I'm sure there's other things I've worked on, but like I said, we'd be here for hours and this is already going to be a long video. Okay. So real quick, I have a little bit of stash. Now, a little bit of stash because I am doing Stitch for Stash this year. Or stitch from stash. I even joined the Facebook group. Shocking, right? Okay. I have not posted on the Facebook group except I think I did one like little introduction post because I'm still kind of learning. So I am keeping track of everything and I'm actually doing really good. I have money saved right now because I think we're planning a trip to Green Bay next weekend, which means I get to go to the stitching bee. Can't wait. Um, and so I'm trying to save my money and I'm trying to get some more finishes in. So I have a little, you know, a little bit to spend because I'm going to stay in budget. I am saying it here. I'm going to stay in budget. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have a ton of stuff that I have bought. Uh, I think quite a bit of this was Christmas. Um, and I don't remember exactly where I got this from. I will put the shop. It's an Etsy shop. And I will put the name of the Etsy shop. Wait. Homespun sampler is the shop maybe i'll put the name because i'm not i'm not harvest passive but that's where i bought this from so this is the summer and winter from the prairie schooler i have the fall and spring i have already had that so i wanted all of them because i am definitely going to stitch the entire series look at that eagle oh my god he's so cool yes 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 that was so cool and look at look at Look at August, the bird and the snail, and oh my God, I wanna stitch that now. Yeah, I may have to pull that out now. Okay, this is all from this, this is from the same shop, um, which I believe is Homespun Sampler, but I might be wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, I, but I will definitely put that for you guys. Okay, so this is Bent Creek Red Bird Sampler, which I have looked at before and I loved it, and so I was kinda like, yep, I'm gonna get that, okay? And then this is Country, this is Homespun Elegance Spring Gathering, which is super cute, but there are lots of specialty stitches in this one, so I'm a little intimidated, but I'll get there. Okay, so this, so these next few things, except for this, which I'm not going to take it out of the package just because it'll crinkle really bad, but this is from um, Dying for Cross Stitch, which is by Kathy, and I, of course I'll put a link. This is a 36 count linen. And it's actually showing up really true to color. That is really close. So it's really, really pretty. And I just, I couldn't resist. So these next few things are from 123 Stitch. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I forgot I, I forgot I bought that. So just some DMCs. I was running a little low on a few colors. So picked up some of those. This was on sale. <laughs> so this is Wilmington Prints. This is on sale. I think it or it might have been on clearance. I mean, it's cheap. How can you? I could, I, yeah, I had to get that because it's cheap and it's adorable. Um, and so I got, this is Teresa Kogut, uh, Oh Sweet Guardian. So it's a guardian angel. And I just, I love Teresa Kogut stuff too. And I couldn't resist. This is just so cute. And then I've been really into cardinals lately. Like, I really want to stitch all the cardinals. And so this is Lovebird. And. I don't know who the designer is. Oh, just another button company was this one that was done for them. Because I do have buttons. But how cool is he? He's so cool. I love him. Love him so much. So I may go ahead and pick up a few of the weeks, the called for weeks, uh, when we go to the stitching bee. So I can stitch him because I really like the colors that they used. And then I got just kind of a good neutral. This is 40 count. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to butcher it but it's really pretty blue really I 
I like that. Okay. And then I got, so this is, this was after the first of the year, so counted against my stitcher sash. This is um, the Drawn Thread Chrysanthemum. I love this series. I have a couple others. I just, I love them. Oh, here's the other. <laughs> See, I told you I had spring and summer. <laughs> this is spring and summer from the Prairie Schooler. I can't wait to stitch him. He's so cute. And then I picked up another, I always pick up a little bit of fabric. So this is water green. This is another 40 count. So good little neutral. And then last, 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 last little bit of stash because Trisha from Three Owl Threads, put a link to her shop, don't worry. She's on Etsy. Uh, she was doing a sale before the Needlework Expo stuff came. She was getting rid of, well not getting rid, but you know, had a sale on the stuff that came out last year. So I went ahead and I picked up this one from Manny Donna. This is the seasonal pin cushions and I love these, they're so cute. And then it's another sheep. So this is Plum Street Samplers. This is Jack. Uh, this is Shepherd's Pie, which is part of the Jack's Sweet Shop. Sweet Shop. So cute. I can't wait to stitch him. So I may go ahead. Like I said, I may make a little list and I may pick up a few of the called for fancy flosses from here too. When we go to stitching day, we'll see. Okay, you guys. That's everything. I think <laughs> that's everything because I'm not gonna go pull out any more stuff. I promise. It's like we're into the 50 minute range, which I don't think I've ever had a video that long. So thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Hope that you enjoyed that I'm hope, you know, coming back to videos. We're going to definitely try to do at least monthly updates. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm telling you guys I'm going to try and do monthly updates. Okay. So hope you have an amazing March. Don't go too crazy on St. Patrick's Day because it actually falls in the middle of the week. But, you know, have some fun, right? We got to have some fun. And have a wonderful Easter if you celebrate or however you celebrate. I hope you have a fantastic Easter. And, yeah, I just hope you guys have a wonderful month. And I guys, I hope you have, I hope you guys are having spring because we're finally getting a little bit of spring and it, it's nice. So, anyway, so like I said, I just hope everyone has an amazing upcoming few weeks. I hope you guys get lots of stitching time. And I'm going to be catching up on my floss tube, you guys. So I will hopefully see you in a month. Thank you guys for joining me. Bye, everybody.